It has been roughly a hundred million years since dinosaurs first appeared on planet Earth, and they now have reached their golden age. It's a time of titans, a world ruled by some of the largest animals the planet has ever seen. But all that is about to change. In the twilight of the Jurassic, the climate became cooler, sea levels fell, and the continents shifted. It was the beginning of the Cretaceous period, and in this new world, life on planet Earth was about to undergo an extreme reformation in its ecosystems. Many kinds of dinosaur that thrived in the Jurassic severely declined, or simply died out, unable to adapt quickly enough to a radically different Earth. But where some species fell, others rose to take their place. A new cast of weird and wonderful dinosaurs were about to take over the Earth. Some were strange, some were fearsome, and some were truly out of this world. This is the story of a completely new generation of dinosaurs destined to change life on Earth for the next 30 million years. This is the story of the Mesozoic's new bloodline, here on Dinosaurs Unleashed. It is the beginning of the Cretaceous period, and while dinosaurs continue to evolve into new forms, another, quieter revolution has been occurring among the flora. The very first flowers have evolved, and although they are newcomers to the Earth, they thrive in this world. Their appearance also marks the evolution of pollinating insects, such as bees, moths, and butterflies. In place of conifers, broad-leaved trees are the dominant plant group in forests. With this new generation of plants comes a new generation of herbivorous dinosaurs. These are Iguanodon, 10 meter long, 3.4 ton herbivores that travel great distances in large herds. Descendants of small and frail creatures like Draconyx, 
Iguanodon are large and powerful dinosaurs. The herd makes a pit stop to forage. Thanks to their ability to chew, inherited from their ancestors, Iguanodon and its relatives can eat away at these new types of plants much more easily than the long-necked sauropods of the Jurassic. It's because of this adaptability that the Iguanodons have been able to outcompete them as the dominant herbivores in the Northern Hemisphere. This is Bruiser, a young adult male Iguanodon. Normally, when they reach maturity, male Iguanodon move on in search of a different herd to lead. But Bruiser has other plans. He hopes to gain control for this herd from its old leader. He'll have to be patient, however. The herd is joined by another signature dinosaur of the early Cretaceous. A notosaur. This is Polacanthus, a four meter long armored herbivore. Like Iguanodon, Polacanthus's ancestors were small and rather meek creatures like Dracobelta. But with the decline of the stegosaurs, the niche for low grazing herbivore was open for the notosaurs to take advantage of. Compared to the stegosaurs, notosaurs like Polacanthus were far better protected with large spines in their sides, and thick slabs of armor on their backs to keep them safe. The relationship between Polacanthus and Iguanodon is a form of mutualism. Neither compete for resources, and both can benefit each other in watching out for predators. Iguanodon has sharp eyesight and good hearing, while Polacanthus has a strong sense of smell. And in this world, you can never be too careful. Europe during the Cretaceous remains this lush because of the numerous rivers, lakes, and streams that carved their way through the land. Normally these waterways would be swollen from the rains, but this year they are extremely shallow. This makes travel for large fish difficult like this Lepidotes, a 30 centimeter long fish that resembles modern day carp. The shallow water does provide easy pickings for piscivores. This is the largest of the region's fish eaters, Baryonyx. As well as being one of the largest theropods in Cretaceous England, Baryonyx is one of the strangest dinosaurs of this time, armed with a long, crocodile-like snout and huge hand claws. Baryonyx is a member of the Spinosaurs, a group of dinosaurs that are quite unlike any other theropod known. Their bodies were similar to those of previous theropods like Allosaurus, but whereas those dinosaurs had jaws filled with knife-like teeth, Spinosaur jaws had cone-shaped teeth. Cone-shaped teeth are specialized for gripping onto prey rather than ripping through flesh. 
Spinosaur jaws, being long and thin, were also subject to breakage from high amounts of stress. So with particularly weak jaws and teeth not exactly fit to rip into flesh, surely Spinosaurs weren't fit for hunting efficiently. But there was a reason behind such a unique skull. Inside the stomach of one particular Baryonyx was the skeleton of a Lepidotes, apparently representing the dinosaur's last meal before it died. Fish tend to be slippery prey, so the conical teeth could have been useful in holding onto them, and their long jaws would have come in handy when fishing too. Like modern day crocodiles and alligators, Spinosaurus had sensory pits on the tips of their snouts, allowing them to detect fish in murky waters and their nostrils were placed farther up their snouts, allowing them to breathe while fishing. And to rip open their catches, Spinosaurus had particularly large hand claws to flay their prey with ease. In fact, the name Baryonyx literally translates to heavy claw. For the Iguanodon herd, the Baryonyx is no immediate threat, and they venture to the bank to drink. Bruiser decides to steal the old leader's drinking spot. He may have been put in his place for now, but Bruiser's not finished yet. A few days later, the herd returns to their favorite feeding ground. The old leader has been keeping an eye on Bruiser. With each passing day, the young dinosaur's boldness grows. But this is no time to be tense. Cousin of Allosaurus, Neovenator is a member of an advanced branch of theropods known as the Carcharodontosaurs. 
The Carcardontosaurs are a specialized family of theropods that belong to the Carnosaurs. Originally comprising of all large theropod dinosaurs, the Carnosaurs now represent a more specific group, branching off into several different subgroups. The Carcardontosaurs, primarily known from the Cretaceous, were the largest and most advanced of these subgroups. At an estimated 7.5 meters in length, Neovenator was a fairly large member of the family. Equipped with classically long, sharp claws and knife-like teeth, Neovenator was most certainly a dangerous hunter, able to take on whatever it perceived as food or a threat. As always, scavengers, like this Eotyrannus, lurk in the shadows. Among the smaller theropods of Cretaceous England, Eotyrannus is an early member of the Tyrannosaurs. Their evolutionary line goes back to the mid-Jurassic period, but they weren't able to reach the massive sizes of dinosaurs like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, and thus could not compete with them for food. To survive, the earliest Tyrannosaurs remained small and elusive, hunting little dinosaurs, or scavenging off the kills of larger theropods. It may have not been much, but in time, the Tyrannosaurus' perseverance would pay off, and eventually, they would evolve into one of the most powerful and most notorious terrestrial carnivores to ever walk the planet. Elsewhere, the Iguanodon herd makes another pit stop to forage. Bruiser eyes a young female feeding next to him. Normally only the leader of the herd can mate with females, but Bruiser decided to try his luck. It's enough to attract the old leader's attention. The leader's patience with Bruiser has become exhausted. A fight is now inevitable. Iguanodon bore unique thumb spikes on their front limbs, and although they are primarily used to pull down branches, they can be wielded as weapons with lethal efficiency.
former leader's corpse is a bonus for the Baryonyx. Still having difficulty finding large fish. But the smell of the kill has drawn the Neo Venator as well. A kill this big is worth fighting for, no matter who the carnivore is. The Baryonyx may have lost this round, but not without leaving its own mark. A few weeks have passed since Bruiser took over as leader of the herd. For the Iguanodon, it is a time of change, both in the present and in the coming future. But many aspects of nature are eternal, and once again, they are shadowed by predatory eyes. This time, the herd is at no loss, and for now, the Neo Venator goes hungry. Theropods like Neo Venator and Baryonyx are just two examples of the incredible myriad of dinosaurs now flourishing on planet Earth. From Europe to Asia to the Americas and beyond, the dinosaurs are about to become their most diverse since their rise in the Triassic. Only time will tell what weird and wonderful animals will appear in the next several million years. For now, life goes on in prehistoric England. Bruiser will pass on his genes to a new generation of strong, determined Iguanodon to roam these forests. And so long as the rains keep the waters rich with fish, the Baryonyx and his kin will thrive for many millions of years to come. It's a whole new world for the dinosaurs. 
a world born from, and will continue on with the tenacity and endurance of this new bloodline.